in this second part of the lesson, we'll be hitting uh, chapter three. And today we will, as part of exercise 3A, fit a least squares regression line to numerical data. So where does this fit in context with the rest of what we've done so far? In the last chapter, we produced scatter plots to check for an association between two numerical variables. So remember, what we were doing was making these scatter plots, EV versus RV, and some of the scatter plots were turning out like this, perhaps. And this would suggest that there is an association between the EV and the RV, because you can see, as the EV increases, the RV decreases. So if the conclusion is that the variables have, and this is really important, that they have a linear association, we can actually go further with this and perform linear regression on the data. If it's not a linear association, i.e. it's this kind of association, might be best fit with a curved line, there's actually something we can do with that, and we do do something with that later. But let's just take it for the moment that it has to be, um, these dots have to form a rough straight line to be able to move forward on this, okay? And what we do is we fit a straight line called a regression line to the data. And we use the equation to model the relationship between the EV and the RV. And the equation is the classic linear equation, y equals a plus bx. You may have seen it in other forms from other teachers, y equals mx plus c is a common way to see the equation of a linear um, uh, function. Uh, we could have y equals ax plus b. The important thing to note is that we have a value here, uh, an x value here, and another value there. Okay, so it always will take this form here. Um, and the way we see it really as part of um, general mathematics is that it's always the response variable is equal to a plus b times the explanatory variable. And why do we develop this equation? Well, the equation allows us to make predictions based on the data that we have. That is, that if we know that there's a relationship between the EV and the RV, then what we can do is use a model or a line that models this relationship. And we can then give the line EV values and it will predict what the RV is going to be. And that's really handy if we're trying to kind of work out how much product to bring to a Sunday market if the weather is seven degrees Celsius, which it was this morning. So these are all kind of things that we would use uh, in business or in uh, science, etc., etc. So the easiest way to fit a line to bivariate data is to construct a scatter plot and draw the line by eye. That is, that if this was our scatter plot, what we do is by eye just roughly go, okay, I think the line of best fit is this line here. And that's a pretty good um, performance. But that's my line of best fit. You might have come in and thought, mm, no, I disagree. Uh, I think it's like that. I think that's the line of best fit. Okay, and someone else might come in and go, that is definitely the line of best fit. Okay, so my next part of the notes suggests that unfortunately, unless the points are very tightly clustered around a straight line, the results you get by using the line of best fit by eye method will differ from person to person. And this is maths. We want a method where we can get the line of best fit and it doesn't vary from person to person. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So we see here that we've got a scatter plot. Here's a point here. There's a point there, there's a point there, there, and finally there. We've got five points on this scatter plot. And it's got this line here called a regression line fitted. This is the straight line um, that we've fitted. Okay. Now these vertical distance, okay, these distances here, the distance from the line to this point here, we call this thing here the residual. And this is the distance the actual value is from the predicted value. Okay, so you can see here that this one was, you know, quite far away. This one was close, quite far away, quite far away, close. Okay, and here's the thing. We're going to fit these things called least squares regression lines. And what least squares regression lines are, they're the line of best fit, literally the line of best fit. There is no better fit you can get because what it does is it minimizes the sum of the squares of the residuals. Basically, what I'm suggesting is that if you did this, the distance between the point and the line would be the smallest 
possible distance you can get, i.e. this is the line of best fit. No one is gonna come along and go, I've got a slightly better fit than this. Okay, so that's all you need to know. When you're getting the least squares regression line, you are literally getting the line of best fit. There's no better fit than it. Okay, so the equation of a least squares regression line will take this form here, where A is the value of the y-intercept. Okay, so this thing here is the y-intercept and B is the slope or the infamous gradient that you would have heard about since year eight, okay? Now that can also be written in the following form, B plus AX, uh, Y equals AX plus B. There's heaps and heaps of different forms for it, okay? And what you've got to remember is the coefficient of X is always going to be the slope, and this thing sitting here by itself is going to be the y-intercept. So it doesn't matter which order it is in, if it looks like this, then this is the y-intercept, and A is the slope, okay? So I don't want you to sort of go, oh, so A is always the slope and B is always the gradient. It kind of matters the way the regression equation is written. You'll, uh, hopefully I'll give that context later on. So if you know some of the information about the data set but don't have the data set, you can find the equation of the line. And the information we need is the mean and the standard deviation of both the EV and the RV and Pearson's correlation coefficient, the R value. So we need five things. So if we have them, then we can get the equation of the line of best fit by doing this to find the B value and this to find the A value. Really, really important. To work out the regression equation, you must know which is the EV and which is the RV. If you get them around the wrong way, then you're going to get a different equation. Okay. So the height and weight of 11 people have been recorded and the values of the following statistics have been determined. Okay, so we've got height and weight. So the first thing we're going to do is note that weight is predicted from height. So height is the uh, EV and weight is the RV. All right, so what they've got is these, the means of the heights uh, or the mean of the height and the standard deviation of the height. They've got the mean of the weight and the standard deviation of the weight. And they've also got the R value. So once or whenever you get these five statistics, you can determine the equation of the least squares regression line. Um, and we want the slope and the y-intercept to two decimal places. Okay, so the first thing we'll get, I think, is the slope. Okay, and the slope is, according to this here, it's this B value here. So to get the slope, all we need to do is go B equals R, which is 0 0.8502, the R value, multiplied by the standard deviation of the Y variable. So remember height is X or EV and weight is the RV. Okay, so it's Y over X. So we're gonna do the standard deviation of Y, which is 7.594 over uh, 7.444. Okay, and this is going to give us our slope or our gradient. So I'm just going to punch that into uh, the CAS because I've got no chance of working that out. So it's 0 0.8502. We're going to multiply that by, uh, what was it, 7.594 over. 7.444. Okay, and it's told us that the gradient or the slope is 0 0.867 blah blah blah. We're just going to round it to two decimal places, so we're going to go and say that that's 0 0.87. Okay, so we've got our slope. All right, so now we're going to get our A value here, and so this is our Y int. So A is equal to, this Y bar is the mean of the Y values. Okay, so Y bar is the mean of the Y values. All right, so we can see that the mean of the Y values is 65.45. Take away the B value that we just found. Okay, so it's 0 0.87 multiplied by X bar, which is the mean of the X values. 173.3. So we're just going to go again over to the CAS and work this out. So we're going to go 
four, five, take away zero point. Now what we're gonna do here with the gradient that I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna use the more exact version, okay, so that I haven't used a rounded version to calculate it. So I know I've got 0 0.87 written there. What I'm gonna do on the CAS is go up and copy that down multiply that by 173.3 and it just makes sure that we're not going to get caught out rounding a rounded already rounded answer okay so we get an a value of where's my cursor can't find where i am there i am okay so we are going to get negative 84 and that might have come out if you use the rounded version, I'm not sure, but it's best to be cautious. Okay, so now what we're going to do is determine the equation of the least squares regression line. So it's going to be y equals, okay, our a value. Okay, so we're just going to follow this pattern here. Our a value is this one here. So we're going to write down negative 84.86. Uh, then we've got our b value, which is 0 0.86, so plus 0 0.8 seven rather, multiplied by our x. Okay, so we've found out our a, we've found out our b, and x is still um, going to be unknown and dependent on what we're predicting. Okay, now typically with this, what we do is we contextualize these variables. So instead of using x and y, we put our, the name of our response variable here. So our response variable in this case was weight. Okay, so we're gonna say weight equals negative 84.86 plus 0 0.87 times uh, our height. And essentially what we've got here is a prediction model. Okay, so we know that these two are related for the data. We've made this prediction model and this allows you to give this equation different heights and what it will do is using the data that was collected, it will go, okay, I'm gonna predict what the weight will be, okay? And all it allows us to do is just develop this prediction model and it might not be perfect, but it is gonna be pretty good if the evidence suggests that the data is related. Okay, sometimes you need to round to a certain number of significant figures. And I've covered this in 10 general, so I know it's taught here uh, to some extent, but students still struggle with that, okay? So regression equations are often rounded using significant figures. So it's part of the VCAR study design. So we've got to teach significant figures to you. And one of the ways I see it implemented is on regression equations, okay? So the, what, the basic rule is move left to right until you hit, uh, that should be uh, right to left. Uh, no, left to right, that's right. Uh, until you hit a non-zero digit. This is the first significant figure and then all you do is you keep counting until you get the number of, uh, relevant number of significant figures and round accordingly. All right, so not sure whether you understood that. The best thing to do with sig figs is to see it in action. Okay, so basically we're gonna start on the left-hand side and move in the right direction, okay? And all we do is the, the time we hit the first non-zero digit, we start counting, okay? So we want this to two significant figures. So here we've hit a non-zero digit, so this is the first significant figure. This is the second significant figure. So we've got two significant figures. So it's gonna be two, three, and then all we do is we round accordingly. So these are going to be zero and zero. So this is rounded to two significant figures. Another way of rounding that, or saying it as a, the way this is rounded is to the nearest hundred. Okay, this would be another way of saying it. Okay, let's try B, all right? So here is the first significant figure. Here is the second significant figure, okay? So we've got our two significant figures here. So I'm gonna write down five. This six here though, this time is not gonna stay as a six because this number here suggests it should go up by one, okay? Where this number here is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So that means that that is gonna go up by one. So that's gonna be 57, and then we're gonna replace the rest of them with zeros, okay? So that's rounded to two significant figures. Okay, this one here, we've got our first significant figure already and our second significant figure. Even if it is a zero, after I've started counting, zeros all count as significant figures. So this is rounded here to two significant figures. So we're gonna go 
point, check that one there. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, so this stays the same. So 6.0 to 2 significant figures is our answer. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, this one here, we've got our first non-zero digit, so that's the first significant figure. This is the second significant figure. 8 suggests this should go up by 1, 8.6 to 2 significant figures. Okay, this one is a little bit harder. So we're going to start counting here, and 0 is not a significant figure, okay? So we're going to move left to right until you hit a non-zero digit. So this is 0, so we're going to keep going, keep going, and we've hit a non-zero digit here. So this is the first significant figure. This is the second significant figure. Third number says this should stay the same. So we're going to write 0 0.012. That is rounded to two significant figures. All right, let's try this one. So that is not going to count as a significant figure. Isn't, is. Okay, so that's our first one. That is our second significant figure. So once we start counting significant figures, zeros count as significant figures. They just don't count initially. All right, so this one means that this number is going to get pushed up by one. 0 0.01, uh, uh, what's that going to be? One. Okay, here we go with this one here. So we've got a non-zero digit straight away. That's our first significant figure. That's our second significant figure. This suggests that it should not go up. It should stay the same. So that's just going to be 13. Okay, so we'll try a couple more. Um, I'm gonna try this one here. I'll try this one. Uh, I'll do this one and I'll do this one, okay? All right, so this one here to three significant figures is going to be first significant figure, second significant figure, third significant figure. All right, so this six next to the third significant figure says that suggests that this should go up by one, so 15.4. Okay, down here, not significant, not significant, significant. First, second, third. 8 suggests this goes up by 1, 0 0.0246 to 3 significant figures. All right, this last one I'll try out now. Doesn't count, doesn't count, doesn't count, doesn't count. First significant, second significant, third significant. 7 suggests it goes up by 1, 0 0.000459. To three significant figures. All right, what I'm going to do is get you to try out a few yourself, okay? I'm going to pause this video and copy in all of the answers or do all of the answers, and then you can check how you went. So I'm going to pause now on question two. Okay, so here are the answers to uh, the following numbers correct to three significant figures. Just noting that this one here correct to three significant figures is 27.0. You might think to write that as 27, but that's actually not written correct to three significant figures. So you do need to write that point zero there because that does tell us a little bit about these numbers um, after it. So it does need to be with the point zero in there, okay? All right, I'm gonna go and do question three now. I'll pause this and then you can check your answers based on this one to five significant figures. Okay, so here are the answers to question three. So hopefully you did all right with that process. Um, once you kind of get significant figures, it can be fairly easy to um, round them quickly. Um, if you don't understand it, it can be a world of pain because it's like some secret code is going on that you kind of don't really get. Okay, so if you're not too sure, um, I'll follow this up in the next lesson. You can ask about it and I'll do as many examples as it needs uh, for the penny to drop for you. Okay, so that's significant figures. All right, let's move on to the next example, which funnily enough requires some significant figures. Okay, so what this one has done is it says find the correlation coefficient rounded to three significant figures. And what they've done is given us mean and standard deviation, mean and standard deviation, and they've given us the least squares regression line. So what I'm going to do is go back up to the formula, which is here, and note that I can get the uh, value of R from this, this uh, formula here. So what I'm going to do is, I'll do this again, 
I'm going to take a photo of that, uh, copy, and I'm just going to use that formula again. So I'm going to paste it in here so I can see that formula. Okay, so let's get cracking. So our B value, okay, so our B value when it's written in this form is going to be our slope. Okay, so I can see that this is 2.45 equals. All right, our R value, that's what we're trying to find out. So we're gonna go R times. All right, now we need the standard deviation of Y. Now, again, remember it's really important to note that Y is gonna be the response variable and we can see ours studied an exam score. That's definitely the EV or the Y and the RV. So this is the X and this is the Y. So we need the standard deviation of the Y, which is 5.42 over the standard deviation of X, which is 1.34. So all we're gonna do now is jump on the calc for a solve. Uh, 2.45 equals R multiplied by And we're solving for R in this case. All right, so the R value, Pearson's correlation coefficient, is 0 0.605, so it's zero point, so that's not significant. Six is significant, zero and five, that's three significant figures, and seven suggests the five should go up by one, so 606, okay? Which means that this data here must have had a moderate uh, positive correlation. All right, so usually after conducting research, we have the data. So this, these two cases here are unusual, okay? Because somehow, for some reason or another, we don't have the data, but we've got all of this information here, okay? But usually we do have the data. If we've done the data collecting, okay, we've usually got the data written down. So this example here, and it's the last example, will be how we do it when we've been given the data. Okay, so remember what we're going to do is state the equation and knowing what the EV is and the RV is, is really, really important. Okay, so we want these regression lines to three significant figures where we're predicting, uh, well, we've got sleeping time and lifespan. And so what we're going to say is that sleeping time is going to be the EV and we're checking uh, the impact it has on lifespan. Okay, so we've got EV and RV, and again, this is classic VCAR. What they will do is uh, put uh, often put the RV first and the EV second, and just really get you to check um, whether you know which one's which, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start writing down the CAS steps, and it's gonna tell us what the equation is, okay? So to do this, we're gonna go Control and Doc, and we're gonna to go to lists and spreadsheet. All right, so our step one, lists and spreadsheet. Step two, enter data with correct coal headings. And remember, I just call mine EV and RV. Okay, so EV always goes in here, EV and RV goes here. All right, so we can see our EV values. I'm gonna type them in. Um, so I'll pause the video while I type in my data so you don't have to watch that. Okay, so I've got my data in. All right, and now what I'm going to do is, so we, w what we're trying to do is state the equation. Okay, so we're gonna go three, all right, so step three is gonna go menu, four, one, and we're gonna do either three or four, okay? Now, in this case, because I've taught it to you and the way VCAR likes to put it is A plus BX, you can use A plus BX, which is four. But if you really have a philosophical objection to that, use three, MX plus B. It's the exact same thing, but we're gonna use menu, four, one, four. That's the way I'm gonna teach it. You can use whatever you want. So I'm just gonna write that down. So that's menu four, one, four. That's to get it in A plus B, X form. All right, so remember it asks you a couple of things. It says, where's your X values or your EV? That's in the column EV. 
where's your Y values? That's in RV. Okay, and it will ask you finally where to plonk the results. We want it in column C, that's fine. So we're going to go OK. All right, so it gives us the data, and what we're going to do is just scroll up, okay, and in the form AX plus B, we can see the A value, okay, the Y intercept is 38.89, blah, 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 and the slope is negative 2.3551, dot, 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 dot. All right, so let's write up our equation, okay, so it's going to be y equals all right so our a value and i think we're going three significant figures so our a value here is 38.9 our b value is negative so we're going to go net take away 2.35 and that five is going to push that up by one so it's 2.36 multiplied by x okay and there's our equation but remember what we do in general maths is we contextualize the y and the x so y is the response okay so we're going to go lifespan equals 38.9 take away 2.36 multiplied by our sleeping time okay and this is our prediction model. This is the way we're going to uh, work, uh, work it all out. Uh, and we're going to use this model here, um, and you can give us a sleeping time of an animal, and what it will do is make an attempt to predict their lifespan. So that's all I wanted to show you for today. Fairly long video, okay? So hopefully you've gotten on to um, kind of grasping most of that. Have a bit of a practice and let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in the next lesson, shoot me an email, tell me what I need to do. Bye.